the, the Rams are being represented in all forms of fashion. I, mean, I spoke to Chancellor Robinson uh, yesterday, and um, he had a lot of great things to say about you, sir. And I know we're going to dive all into it. You ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. Hey guys, welcome to The Mission. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton, and it's Labor Day weekend. That's right. HBCU Classic is going on right here at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. CSU football, WSSU football, all week long, we've been blessed to hear from the president of CSU, Kevin Porter, new head coach of CSU. We've heard from Chancellor Robinson of WSSU, and now... It is my golden honor to have the pride of North Carolina Central. I'm talking New Orleans Saints, Phoenix Cardinals, retired as a New York Giant. Big up to you, sir. Head coach Robert Massey of Winston-Salem State University, the new head coach, is joining us right here on the mission. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so honored to have you on here. Before we dive in and talk about your vision of WSSU football and your mission, let's talk about this golden opportunity to have your student athletes, your players open up the season, HBCU football in its finest right here at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Well, we're very fortunate, happy, lucky, and blessed, and very excited. I, I relish this to the guys. I, I told them about my time when I played in the National Football League, that first Monday night game, how everybody in the football world will be watching you perform. So we got to make sure we put a great product out there. So that's the thing we, we've been concentrating on, but we're very excited. You know, not only that is that is for the Black College Hall of Fame, but we're playing at the Tom Benson Stadium, who's one of the owners of the team that I used to play for and played for, uh, and it's Canton, Ohio. So you're talking about a once-in-a-lifetime experience for a lot of our young men. And uh, we want to make sure we go there and ha enjoy the process, but at the same time, come on with a victory. Coach, this is your opening debut as head coach of Winston-Salem State University. Talk about that. How exciting is that? Because Kevin Porter, another former NFL legend in himself, he's opened up. So it was like both, I, I don't want to say rookie coaches because you guys are far from rookie coaches, <laughs> but new head coaches of your respected universities are opening up here at HBCU. That's got to that's gotta kind of get the juices going. Well, you know, the interesting thing is the trend lately in the HBCUs where you have you have a lot of former NFL players that are currently head football coaches at HBCUs. And then to do it in Canton, Ohio, representing the Black College Hall of Fame and playing in the Hall of Fame for professional football, that's an outstanding feat, man. And, and I think that's something we're all excited and we're proud about. And uh, we're looking forward to it. I'm excited. I can't wait to have your students walk here through the Black College Football Hall of Fame gallery where all the greats are. And I know you know this guy right here, Timmy Newsom. He's yes, a Winston-Salem State, you know, Black College Football Hall of Famer as well, 2019, the class of 2019. How great is it to have one of your guys in this gallery? And how often does Timmy get back to the university? Well, you, you know, uh, I had a chance for you guys who didn't know, Timmy went into the North Carolina Hall of Fame this past uh, spring. Oh, and of wow. course, being the head coach, I went up to uh to uh support him there. So uh, you know, it is hold great on, hold on, coach. My mind serves me correctly. You're in that hall of fame as well. No, 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 not yet. We're working on that. That's oh, you're oh, you're, oh, oh you're not in central states, no, um, North Carolina no, no, no. Central. No, no, no. We're talking about North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, we're talking about North Carolina. Carolina. Okay, 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 okay. Ones, but, okay, okay. You know, let me let me you know, I, I, I'm just excited, man. It's Black College and, Hall of Fame Classic Week and it's Labor Day, man. This is this is my homecoming. So I'm sorry. Right. I'm, I'm a little excited. I'm gonna let you talk, coach. And, and, and this is not a shot at Timmy, but as you get a little older, they start to appreciate you a little more. So in yeah. a few years, hopefully I can be in the North Carolina Hall of Fame as well. Okay. But uh just going up and visiting with Timmy. Uh, you know, obviously when he was elected to the uh Black College Hall of Fame, there was a gift from him, a financial gift, and then he's been one guy a guy what we call a, a thousand horn member, guys that give annually a thousand dollars. You know, the goal there is to get the alumni base to continue to find supporters and themselves donate to help sports in particular, in our case, football. So Timmy's been very supportive there. Uh, outstanding, sharp young man, uh, very intelligent, uh, Ram diehard. You know, one of the things we talked about when we were there, he was like, well, coach, you know, we, we found out we were coming to Ohio. 
We say, well, you know, we want to paint the city red. And that's what we mean by the support. That's amazing, Coach. Let's dive in and talk about your program. What is your vision as you're building this football program here for WSSU? Well, I appreciate you saying program because a lot of times we get in coaches, we get in talk conversation, we think team. Well, one of the things I, I did for me, and uh, it was based off my experiences in life, and in particular at the national football level. One of the things folk would always remind you when you were a rookie, you got to protect the shield, protect mm. the shield. And you think, well, what are you talking about? Well, the NFL. Well, in my case here at West Central State University, we're going to 80 years of football. And uh, and I'm the fortunate and lucky to be the 10th head coach. Well, one of the things we did in our research in terms of interviewing for the job was we went back to Coach William Bill Hayes, who's also a member of the Black College Hall of Fame, as a coach. Well, one of the things was every coach since that point has won a championship. So mm. we talked about now protecting the legacy. The legacy in football is we've been winning CIAA championships for over 40 years now. And once, you know, most of the times you win your, your conference championship, you get to the Division II national playoffs. So that's something we're looking forward to doing. We want to protect the legacy by winning the championship. And then once we get to the playoffs, same thing we were told when I was playing pro football, anything can happen. You look at the uh, Coach Maynard. He made it all the way to the national championship game in 2012, I believe it was. So, mm -hmm. you know, for our kids now to come to the Black College Hall of Fame, see Timmy Newsom, who's a WSSU grad, see Coach Hayes, who's there, and then turn around – at four o'clock Sunday and see the city red, uh, it bodes well for our kids in that experience. You know, coach, how important is it for your student athletes to have a well balance of academics, athletics, as well as the overall student life? How how important is that balance for your kids? It's very important. One of the things I term, term I use is, is I want to make sure when these young men leave us, they're renaissance men. Mm. They're well-rounded from an educational standpoint, from a societal standpoint, in terms of making sure that they go out in the community and make a difference. We talk a lot of times about being productive U.S. citizens in your local, state, and, and, and federal uh, governments in terms of giving back to the community, in terms of making sure you vote, leave voter registration and things of that nature. Times have changed, and it's for the better for us, in particular our HBCU universities. So we want to maximize the potential and the earnings that we can to support our schools so we can be around another 100 years long after Coach Bass is gone. Absolutely. And and just when you when you think of that, you know, and all the 10 years that you played in the NFL and the blessings that you've been assistant coach, when you look at your coaching style, who were some of the greats that influenced you and some of the some of the little nuggets that you have taken along the way that carries you in this new role as head coach? Well, obviously, my very first NFL head coach, Jim Moore, he taught me how to be a professional. You know, I, I was coming from Division Two. I was a real good athlete. I could run. And, and again, you know, I thought, you know, when I got there with my ego, well, I'm betting some of these guys that I've never played down in the National Football League. Well, obviously, I got a little wake-up call. But with that, Jim Moore was a, a very strong influence. John Fox, who's my D coordinator in, in New York, one of the things he made it real simple for me to say to the players, keep it simple. You know, allow mm. them to play fast, have fun, fly around. So from a defensive standpoint, that influence was, Jim, uh, was uh, John Foxy, but from a coaching standpoint, I, I'd have to give credit to uh, Jim Moore. Now, there's some other people that touched my lives before I got there. Charlie Houston, which some people won't find amazing, but he is a WSSU alum, former football coach. He was my, back then, a long time ago, they was called junior high school. He was my junior high school coach. He had an influence on me like no other. And then mm. Steve Charles, was my high school coach, and I, and I got to give Henry Lattimore credit because he was the guy that gave me the opportunity of a lifetime to attend North Carolina Central University. So those guys, along with John Outlaw, they shaped and formed me in terms of the coach that I desired to be today. You mentioned Jim Mora. I was blessed to interview him for our podcast because he actually um, presented rest in may he continue to rest in peace, Mr. Sam Mills into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year. And he mentioned how <clears> Sam <throat> Mills came from Montclair State, which is a small school. And and it's like and, and it's funny how you 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 know you you mentioned him and coming from um North Carolina Central. And what what did he see in you? What were those early conversations that he had from you? Because I wonder if it draws that parallel of Sam Mills because he saw Sam Mills and Sam Mills was a short guy and he was tough as nails, but there was just the and he embraced him because he he saw him on, on the level of uh, uh, uh excuse me 
Yes, it, it, it was Arena Football League. It was no, no. I'm sorry, Canadian USFL. football. You, yeah, USFL. And then he made the transition of bringing him to to uh, the, the New Orleans Saints, uh, and, and they became the Dome Patrol, if you will. Yes, yes, I was part of that. The tail end of that. Yeah, I, I got an interesting story to tell you. I'll come full circle, but it you know to give credit to the HBCU colleges. If you look back from like '72 and up to now, a lot of the uh, Hall of Famers are products of the HBCU schools. So right. the NFL has always known who we were. They've always paid attention to our abilities. But most of the time, it was the skill guys, DBs, mm -hmm. receivers, running backs, returners, things of that nature. So, and I was, you know, obviously being drafted in the 80s, I came up in that era where they, you know, they thought, hey, well, Mass was a pretty good football player and he can turn kicks, punts, and all the other. So I was given that opportunity and chance by um, Coach Moore. Now, I'll tell you what's interesting. Obviously, you know, Sam Mills is my teammate. He went in. So yeah. congratulations to him and his family. But Sam Mills taught me how to tie a tie. Wow. It's crazy. Now, let me tell you what happened. When I got drafted, I went and bought me a suit. The young lady tied the tie for me. I said, ma'am, I don't know how to tie a tie. So she loosened it up, and I kept it that way for the longest. So then we get ready to travel. Our first travel game, Coach Morris said, hey, be there at this time. Don't be late. You're going to get fine. I'm in the locker room sweating because I done messed around and pulled my tie apart. So I'm trying <laughs> to tie the tie. So Sam comes over, ties the tie for me. Then I thank him. And then, you know, and then the next day he comes back and he teaches me how to tie a tie. Now, let me tell you how it comes full circle. Sam Mills, three. When I got drafted, you know, Bobby Brown and Bear Bill the Bull were the, were the hot music folk. <laughs> I had a hat and I kept my tag on it. I had my, my jeans and I kept my tag on it. So Sam Mills Jr. had to be maybe seven, maybe. Uh -huh. So. You know, there was a big rave about Robert Massey. He started all of a sudden. So I come out of the locker room one day dressed, you know, the hip-hop fashion for the late 80s. And then <laughs> Sam Mills Jr. went and bought a hat, with, and he left the tag on it. Right, so right. So Sam, the dad, the senior, said, hey, what are you doing with that hat? Because, you know, back then, your parents think if you got a hat with a tag on it, and you they know they ain't giving you no money, you stole it. Right. So he said, uh, well, Robert Massey came out of the locker room with, with, with dressed like that. So... Day later, Sam comes to me and says, Robert, let me let me holler at you for a second. So I say, Yeah, Sam, what's up? He say, Man, what's with this hats with the tags and stuff in your in your in your jerseys with the tags still on? I say, Oh, Sam, that's the fad, man. You know, you're a little older than me, but that's what we wear now. He said, Well, he said, You're gonna have to tone it down, Robert, because I almost I was gonna hurt little Sam because he explained to me that he got it from you. So and, and here's how full circuit come. Sam also went into the North Carolina Hall of Fame along with Timmy. So right. I got a chance to see Sam's beautiful wife, Melanie, and Sam Jr., the whole family. And we laughed about that, man. So this is wow. a real good, this, this is very special, important for me to be involved in this. And I'm so grateful and thankful that, along with Chancellor Robinson, A.D. Thomas, and the Ram Nation, they've given me this opportunity. And, and my goal is to make sure when we leave Ken, we're going to be very proud to be a Ram. That's a that's that's amazing, Coach. And you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the rich history of HBCU football and how it helped and shaped you as you made your transition to the NFL and becoming an NFL player and having a ten year career. That's as you know, the NFL stands for not for long, and that's ten years. That's a long time at, at three different um, um, um storied franchises as well. That's 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 excellent, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, you know, it comes from my experience in, in HBCUs, the hard work that we've done. And I, I listen, I'm going to tell you, you know, love Hank Lattimore, but he ran us so much. When I got to the NFL, I'm looking around like, oh, we're not going to do any gashes. We're not going to climb the hill. We're not going to backpedal the hill. Oh, I can do this for the rest of my life. So he was an inspiration because I thought this was easy at some point. <laughs> Well, Coach, looking at your team, uh, switching gears a bit, I want to take some time to look at your roster. And for people that may not know WSSU football, and I asked Coach Porter this as well, you know, I know we should pay attention to the entire team, but just for some of those players of who we should be watching out for, who are those guys? Well, you know, we, we've uh, we got quite a few new guys that have been very impressive. Uh, we did the transfer uh, route as well as we signed about 60 high school kids. So we'll be running back by committee. Of course, next year, excuse me, this year, last year, we had uh, uh, Alex Hayes, who's a running back. So he did well mm -hmm. for us. But, you know, we brought us a competition. We got Jalen Hester. We got uh, Noah Marshall. Those guys, we, got, we wanted to get, you know, tougher with the running game. We want to run the ball. You know, being an NFL guy, we run the ball, stop the run defensively, force focal pads, and great special teams. Well, that's our mantra. That's what we're going to do 
But at the end of the day, we had to make sure we 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 expanded the offense. So offensively, we went out and we signed some receivers. We got mm-hmm. R.J. Mobley, transfer from uh, Wingate College, about a 6'3", 6'4", kid, good wow. size and speed. We actually had uh, the, the Coast Prime influence, Chad Turner, small guy, <laughs> but, but you know, hey, big-time returner, big-time receiver, to go along with uh, Antoine Collins, a kid that we had a year ago. So those names would be some that would flash. You know, the quarterback position right now, we're still battling. We got Don Graves coming back, returning quarterback, as well as uh, Jameer Slade, who's a freshman. And uh, we got a transfer, Richard Latimer. So those guys, we've yet to determine who's going to be the starter, but they're progressing in the direction we want them to. And we had to do a makeover on our offensive line as well. Offensive mm. line-wise, we got uh, Keith Quick, who's a transfer. Uh, we got Willie McDuffie returning. We have Kendall Graves returning. We have Tyshawn Miller returning. So mm. we're, 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 we're pretty much a veteran team, but we're going to have a lot of our backups will probably be the true high school players who will get an opportunity and a chance to play. Defensively, you know, Don, Deontay Jones is coming back. Trevor Willard is coming back. Uh, you know, we got some guys that made some plays for us a year ago. And, of course, you know, Eli Banks is second-team all-conference guy, free safety, who has the ability to play corner. So we don't have to go to a nickel package. He just slides over and bump a guy up. And we, mm. we pretty much don't have to worry about getting caught in transition when teams try to tempo us. So we, we, we feel good about the guys that are, are coming in. We feel good about the guys that are returning. The thing we're going to do is make sure – for, from a coaching standpoint, this is coaching conversation, what I'm talking about now. We're going to simplify it so we can play fast mm. and be competitive and tough. Now, Coach, tell me about Tayshawn Taylor. Um, he is on the 2022 Black College Football Player of the Year uh, list watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, Deacon Jones Trophy is one of the most prestigious uh, awards in HBCU football. One of the co-founders, James Shaq Harris, had made that right. clear. So tell us about Tayshawn and what he brings to your defensive unit. Well, I'll tell you something that's more important about Tayshawn. Tayshawn okay. was an outstanding backer. We love it. Tayshawn had the opportunity of a lifetime. He graduated. And he had a job opportunity. And based on that, our advice was, you know, hey, man, you've done all you can do at this level. You know, uh, we don't know if he was, you know, NFL material. So we have to be realistic with our kids, too. So right. Tayshawn is not returning to play football. He's gone on into the work world, and we wish him well. Outstanding player. Would have loved to have him back. But at the end of the day, I'm living proof. And so is Coach Porter. We can't play forever. We right. would like to. But this guy has represented WSSU in the way we want him to outstanding citizen, outstanding student, outstanding person, and more importantly for football, an outstanding football player. Will he be missed? Yes. We have a linebacker by, linebacker by committee there to uh, replace him. But again, you know, at the end of the day, the end game is that we get our young men the opportunity to win a championship while they're playing, graduate, and then get out into the real world and make a name for not only themselves, but for the university that they represent. And that way we know we've done our job because he's out now protecting the legacy. And lastly, Coach, before I let you go, man, you know, Northeast Ohio is still new to HBCU Classic, the flavor, the atmosphere. But for people that may be on the bubble and really don't have anything going on during Labor Day weekend, why is it so important that they should attend this HBCU Classic? If you could just discuss the atmosphere, the energy, uh, your, your past experiences, because I mean, I can talk to him blue in the face, but to hear from the head coach of WSSU, I think will resonate a little more. Well, one, one of the reasons is, you know, when you decide to attend a historical black college, there's a you get a very, very quality education. Mm-hmm. And I think once you get the black college experience, you really understand the mantra for all of us is paying it forward, understanding, being able to go out into the world, make a name for yourself, represent the institutions that you graduated from. But at the same time, continue to bring, give back to your institution and possibly have some other institutions that are historical black colleges that don't normally get this type of attention. This is national, international attention. So one of the things this would be, and, you know, most, most people, I used to get joked about this all the time in the field. It is going to be a festival. You're going to see the band. You're going to see the cheerleaders. You're going to see the alumni. You, you know, I, I, was, I started out in New Orleans. So it's almost like that Mardi Gras type of, of deal. <laughs> Without right. the Esquad, you know, the, the, without the girl Esquad. <laughs> but you're going to see people walking down the street with WSSU red. You'll see some people with Central State on. And again, these classics are special to us because they're put on by us for us. Mm-hmm. So what you what happened is you bring your kids, you bring your grandkids to the event, and they'll see something that they enjoy doing. They'll see something that they like. And that's enough influence to get them to attend an HBCU. And then we just keep that legacy going from there. 
Well, Coach, we can't wait to honor you and your team right here in Canton, Ohio. Thank you so much for giving us this time to join us right here on The Mission. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. We'll see you up there.